Now that we have our calcium reactor installed, let's get it dialed in. Hello, this is Jaren from Qualview, welcoming you back to another episode of CVTV. Today we conclude our calcium reactor video series with episode number three, calcium reactors, fine tuning and troubleshooting. In episode number one of our three part series, we explore what a calcium reactor is, what is needed to run a calcium reactor and what to look for when purchasing one for your system. In episode two, we guide you step by step on how to assemble and install a Reef Octopus calcium reactor. Now, in this final episode, we will discuss what to test for and how to fine tune the calcium reactor to support the alkalinity and calcium needs of our reef system. We also answer some commonly asked questions such as what to do when your alkalinity and calcium are unstable and constantly out of whack. Corals, invertebrates, and even coralline algae are constantly using up calcium and alkalinity in our aquariums. A calcium reactor is a piece of equipment that helps simultaneously maintain alkalinity and calcium throughout the day, attaining the ultimate in stability and growth of stony corals. Once a calcium reactor has been installed, our next step is to fine tune it to meet the calcium and alkalinity demands of our aquarium. There are several different ways to fine tune a reactor, but I will describe a method that most reef keepers have adapted to over the years with great success. A calcium reactor adds balanced amounts of calcium and alkalinity. If the levels start out unbalanced, they will remain unbalanced at different levels no matter what you try to do when dialing in the reactor. So, before we start, it is imperative that our calcium and alkalinity are at our desired levels before dialing in the calcium reactor. Test and record the results to compare with future tests. Continuous testing during this process ensures that we are making the proper changes to obtain our goal. You should never use a calcium reactor to drastically increase or adjust calcium or alkalinity levels. If attempted, chances are you'll never be able to adjust the reactor properly, likely overshooting your target setting and possibly stressing the corals within your system. I also must emphasize the importance of being patient. After making an adjustment to the reactor, it should be left alone for a minimum of two or three hours to allow the changes that you have made to take effect. The following steps describe a quick and easy tuning process for Reef Octopus Calcium Reactors. Step 1. Start your reactor. At this point, we assume that you have your calcium reactor installed and running. We begin with a fairly slow CO2 bubble count and a low effluent flow rate to ensure that we do not overshoot our ideal setting. Let's start at around 50 drops per minute of effluent water and 50 bubbles per minute of CO2. Each system is different and settings will vary. When adjusting the reactor, do it in small increments. Our goal is to lower the pH within the reactor to an approximate level of 6.7 to 6.5 in order to dissolve the media. Step 2. Monitor the reactor's pH level and make adjustments. At this time, we must monitor the pH within the reactor and begin making small adjustments to the effluent followed by equal adjustments to the CO2 flow. We monitor the CO2 injection by measuring the reactor's pH level and only use the bubble counter as a visual reference since they can be misleading. It will take a few hours before the drop in pH is noticed. Any and all adjustments will have a lag period of a few hours. If the pH is too high, we must reduce the effluent flow rate. If the pH is too low, you guessed it, increase the effluent flow rate. Allow a few hours for the reactor to respond to any changes. Continue to repeat this process until the pH value within the reactor is controlled between 6.5 and 6.7. Do not drop the pH below 6.5. The low pH could turn your reactor's media into mush and possibly damage the reactor's circulation pump. Step 3. Monitor your tank's alkalinity and calcium and make adjustments. Once we have the reactor's pH where we need it to be, then we can begin testing the aquarium's alkalinity daily at the same time to ensure that the reactor is supplementing enough calcium carbonate to accommodate the demand of our corals. Be sure to record your results. When fine-tuning a reactor, there are two controls with a total of four different cause and effect scenarios that can take effect when adjusting the reactor to your system's needs. The first control is the effluent 
or the water exiting the reactor. Increasing the effluent flow rate will cause the pH within the reactor to rise and decrease the effluent's concentration of alkalinity and calcium. Decreasing the effluent flow rate will cause the pH within the reactor to drop and increase the effluent's concentration of alkalinity and calcium. The second control is the amount of CO2 added to the reactor in order to drop and retain the low pH required to melt the media within. Increasing the CO2 feed will cause the pH within the reactor to drop and the media to melt more rapidly and therefore raising the effluent alkalinity and calcium concentrations. Decreasing the CO2 feed will cause the pH within the reactor to rise and therefore lower the effluent alkalinity and calcium concentration. As mentioned previously, we must resist all temptation to tinker with the reactor after making changes. This includes making adjustments to the effluent, water, or CO2 feed. The reactor should be left alone for several hours to allow the changes that were made to take effect. Making premature changes to the reactor is not only unnecessary, but also complicates the dialing in of the reactor. When finished, double check the reactor's pH to verify that it is still around your desired level. If not, we need to continue to make adjustments until the pH within the reactor returns to your desired level. Periodically check the tank's alkalinity levels, especially with the addition of new corals or with accelerated coral growth. As the reactor media becomes depleted, you may need to adjust your settings slightly to keep up with your system's demand, or simply refill it. We suggest never allow the media to drop below halfway of the reactor. Now, let's cover some commonly asked questions associated with calcium reactors and how to troubleshoot them. After adding my calcium reactor, I noticed that my tank's pH has steadily decreased. What am I doing wrong? In order to rid the tank's excess CO2 and maintain a good system pH, we need to ensure that the effluent of the calcium reactor is introduced into a high flow area. Also, it is essential that your aquarium has good surface agitation to allow excess CO2 to escape. I have an alkalinity of 11 dKH, but my calcium level is only 220 ppm. I have tried adjusting the reactor, but I cannot get the calcium level to rise without the alkalinity going too high. What can I do? This is a rather common mistake when setting up a calcium reactor to provide a correct balance between calcium and alkalinity. A calcium reactor adds calcium and alkalinity to the tank in the same ratio as it's used by corals during the process of calcification. So, it is not possible to change the calcium level without affecting the alkalinity level. This is why you should never try to individually adjust your aquarium's calcium and alkalinity levels using the reactor. Calcium chloride and sodium bicarbonate can be used to boost your calcium and alkalinity levels individually. I have a lot of air bubbles collected in the top of my reactor. Is this normal? If not, what should I do? It is normal to cycle a bit of gas every now and then, but when it accumulates at the top, the CO2 needs to decrease or the effluent needs to be increased. If the issue persists, make sure that the tubing and or fittings aren't leaking. Purge any excess CO2 or air from the feed water by using the valve on the recirculation line. Do I have to maintain the calcium reactor and or its components? For the most part, calcium reactors are pretty hands off and only require normal routine maintenance of cleaning the pump and media containment sponges. Refilling the media should be done every three to four months or as the levels drop about halfway. Other than that, it is recommended to periodically check the effluent output flow and CO2 flow rate. Well, I hope you enjoyed our series on calcium reactors. Our goal is to help reefers like you maintain successful reef tanks by providing you with the key information that will make a calcium reactor easy to understand and use. If you have any issues or questions, do not hesitate to visit our support portal at www.coralview.com forward slash support. In need of replacement parts, just head on over to www.coreview.com for a complete list of available parts. If you haven't already, click that subscribe button to stay up to date on all the latest product reviews and tutorial videos. You can also follow us on Twitter at CoralView and give us a like on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash CoralView Aquarium Products.